Okay, this is just a quick tutorial to show you how to create like a signature or something using uh, GIMP, GIMP2. Okay, if you don't have GIMP2, don't ask me where to get it, because you can just get it yourself. Watch. Go to Google. Okay, now open up GIMP2. Okay, this will take a second to open, but I have 10 minutes. I have an old version. The other one will be... Oops. This will pop up for some reason, I don't know why. But it doesn't matter, because it'll open anyway. Okay, go to File, New. Then make it, uh, like, make the height, I think, is 150 for most forms. And 420 is a good width, probably. Let's do that, okay. Then make this set to pixels, not inches or picas or whatever. Just make it set to pixels. Don't have everything else like that. Let's see what's an advanced option. You can change it so that uh, it's grayscale. Just leave it at RGB color, background color. Uh, yeah. Okay. I'll just click OK. There's my picture so far. Okay. Let's start. Okay. First thing you're gonna want to do is make a background. I'll just make a uh, double click on the picture, and you can change the color all this stuff of the background. Let's just make the background blue. Paint bucket, fill in just like an MS Paint. And then uh, I like to make backgrounds like this just because I'm a noob and I'll, I don't know that much about this program yet. Okay, I'll just make a darker bluish color. And then I just go really fast over the background. Make a nice looking uh, background without having to use any brushes. You can also get custom brushes and do it, do some pretty cool stuff too, off of DeviantArt.com or something. I'm just doing this really fast because I don't really have time because I only I have to fit this video into ten minutes. Uh, let's just put a little bit. Of, let's put a little bit of white in there too. not a very good background, but hey. Now we'll just, let's put a tiny bit of orange, too. Okay, now uh, let's go get my other image file. Uh, open. <coughs> then, uh, it was on my desktop, so I double click desktop, images, I think this is right here. There we go, let's zoom in a little bit. 400%, ooh, this is a really bad resolution. Now click on this tool right here, your path tool. Okay, now what you're gonna want to do is pick a place to start and just start uh, making these little balls right here, all the way around. I'm not gonna show all this because it takes a second. It takes quite a light while to do this, but this is the best way you can do it if there's a uh, in GIMP. I think if it's not pre-rendered. Make sure that you don't click and drag these, because sometimes they'll mess it up. Keep go I'm gonna turn this off for a second as I. Okay, uh, back. Uh, I'm almost done going all the way around this. By the way, when you pick your uh, image, you're going to want to have one with a lot better resolution than this one. I picked. I didn't realize that the resolution was this bad on this one, but so just get a bigger image but it doesn't really matter when it's really small. Okay, when you're done going all the way around with the little things, hey, wait, let me show you a little bit. When you do this and this happens, <laughs> try, uh, just control Z, because I don't really know it. Just hit control Z and undo that one and do it again, because it seems to mess mine up whenever I do that. I'm not sure that one does. Anyway, when you get to the end, hold down control so that the weird little upside down U shows, and click on the first point you made, and it'll complete the, uh, path around here. <coughs> then go to your uh, path window and then there should be one that this thing right here. I think you make one by going to... Uh, okay, I figured it out. You go to uh, f you go to dialogues and you just click paths. And then I think you just drag the window in to get into this window. It should open up in a new window but it doesn't matter. Anyway, uh, <coughs> it should show your path that you just completed right here. Just click, uh, click the stop button. Should do that, and then uh, click back on your layer. 
and you can right click on this you don't really need to but I always I always do just click add alpha channel <coughs> then uh, click on the move layers or selections button and if you notice all the little dots disappeared but there's a small dotted line around here then right click on this go to edit and do copy or paste if you want to keep the image you can do copy but I usually I just do cut and I'll cut the entire thing that you just highlighted out of the picture and go to your uh, little thing that you made with the background which should still be open unless you exit out of it hopefully you saved if you did exit out of it then you can drag around your image on that so and then if you right click on your floating pasted layer which should just appear in your layers dialog if you don't have a layers dialog by the way you can just open it through this and then you just click layers it's not very hard uh... then you just click uh... scale oh yeah i need to make a new layer first i think I haven't. oh yeah here it is i haven't done this in a little while that's why I'm kind of jittery. Anyway, just you can make it bigger by just clicking this, then clicking. You just click it up, and then you click scale. I'll make it a little bit bigger. It's a little bit blurred because of the poor uh, resolution of the picture I've picked. But that you want to do scale because that'll scale up the bottom one too, so you don't stretch it out. Anyway, let's just put it right here. Then you click. Then you right click an anchor layer. I'll make it part of the background. But I, I always do new layer because that just makes it a new layer. So now I can drag this around still in the background. And since it's blurry, let's sharpen the image. So let's go to blur or sharpen the little water drop tool. Then you can uh, make it to blur or sharpen it. You just uh, select one of your brushes with that on and then you just kind of move it over the thing and it'll kind of improve your... Uh, It'll make it less blurry, like it's really blurry right now. I, I have a really crappy mouse, so it's kind of hard for me to do this very well. Uh, see, now it's a little bit less blurry. It's still really blurry because it's such a crappy, such a small image. Not really crappy image, but anyway. There we go. And then uh, the sides are pretty blurred into the background right now, but... Uh, but if it's a really sharp one, then you can blur just right over the sides of it to make them move into the background a little bit more. Just all the way around. Uh, there we go. That looks pretty. That doesn't look that good, but it uh, doesn't matter too much. And then if you want to, you can make a new layer over that one. And then you can like add like some extra crap, like a... Uh, you could put like a little bit of a. I don't usually use those. I usually just um. I usually just use these and just kind of uh, go like this, you know, like like a small little, and kind of make them in the fog or something. This is not a very good sync, by the way. Okay, anyway, let's add text. Okay, uh, just go to filters, text, free type. This might come up. I don't know why it does that, but it does. It just click cancel until it goes away. It might come up like a hundred times. Just keep clicking cancel. Now it's loading all my text because I have a lot of text on here. And then I have uh, some of this stuff that I got offline. Let's just use this one because I'm running out of time. Let's put uh, my name. Let's put uh, C I Sir. And then I can change the font size here. And uh, you can change the spacing. Then I can just click OK and add it to the layer. And then it should automatically add as a new layer. Then you just can drag it around. You can change the color if you did that before this. Then you can use the rotation tool. Click on it and just click and drag it to rotate it. And just click rotate. And that looks pretty, doesn't look that good, but. Uh, Anyway, that's how you can do it. Then you want to file, then you just click uh, Save As. And I'll just save it on my desktop as uh, sig. Dot. And then uh, if you have, if this is file, this is your file type, you can just click it, or you can just have it by extension. And you all, and I usually save it as PNG because that's a good file type. So then I'll just do sig. Dot. This vid might be a bit choppy because I had to cut out a whole bunch of stuff because of the time.